No one really wants palliative care, or do they? Palliative care reduces the serious health-related suffering of adults and children in households affected by life-limiting illnesses such as stroke, cancer, and heart failure. It is integral to universal health coverage. The World Bank and others endorse palliative care as a value-for-money intervention which supports poverty reduction at household level. Despite this, access to palliative care remains at critically low levels in most low- and middle-income countries around the globe, and its role remains widely misunderstood in global health. We undertook research in Malawi, a low-income country in south-central Africa with patients and families who had experienced a diagnosis of advanced cancer. They used photo voice to tell the story of their illnesses, how they understood well-being, and the role of palliative care. Minika is 37 years old. She works for a scrap metal merchant, but her work is disturbed when her leg starts to swell. After several trips to the hospital, she is told she has advanced cancer. More visits to hospital means more money for transport and to buy some of the medicines the doctors ordered. Milika stays at home, no longer able to work or walk because of her painful swollen leg. The community-based palliative nursing team sees Milika and, following assessment, she starts taking oral liquid morphine, which helps to reduce her severe pain. She finds courage to start working again, and her children return to school. We conducted a study in which we asked 150 households to record where they went to get help and how much it cost them. We measured out-of-pocket costs following a diagnosis of advanced cancer, looking specifically at what happens when households receive palliative care. We proposed that out-of-pocket costs could be reduced by controlling symptoms and through patient-centered communication, reducing the need for non-beneficial care. Take for example Jeff. Jeff is 50 and he is bedridden with a brain tumor. His family members are trying to decide whether to sell some fields and a truck from their maize business to pay for him to travel outside the country for treatment. With the help of the palliative care team, they arrange to visit the village elders to discuss how best to support Jeff with his advanced illness. The family decide to care for Jeff at home, allowing him to die comfortably rather than spending money on non-beneficial costly care. In our study, we found that almost two-thirds of households faced catastrophic out-of-pocket costs following a diagnosis of advanced cancer compared to less than half when they received palliative care. But only one in five households with advanced cancer received palliative care. Investment in palliative care reduces suffering and promotes future household health and well-being. No one really wants palliative care. Or do they? <laughs>